uh, let me introduce myself. I am Subima Matuso. I am Uyghur American. I came to the U.S. in 2007 with my brother and sister-in-law. I got my bachelor's degree in business management from Georgia Mason University here in Virginia. Uh, I'm married. I have three beautiful children. I'm a mother who's struggling to fulfill my duties as a loving and caring mother, mother due to the injustice on my dad's imprisonment and his disappearance from my life. On April 29th, 2017, on the day of my parents' departure to the U.S., my 68 years old father, Mehmet Abdullah, went missing. Three long years after my father's disappearance, the Chinese government sentenced him to life in prison, accusing him as separatist, two-faced, and they also accused my father for abusing power to seek profits from others and accused confiscates his life, lifelong earnings and uh, my mother's retirement incomes and uh, insurance, the my mom with nothing. My, um, my father was the chief of Xinjiang Forestry Department and retired from there in 2008. My father has never committed any crimes. He has spent all his life doing valuable work for his homeland. Because of his great leadership ability, proficiency, and his integrity, he was always chosen to work at governing positions. Now, all of a sudden, it's shocking to hear that all of a sudden he was proclaimed as a criminal in eyes of the CCP, among millions of other Uyghurs who were jailed and locked in concentration camps. Only crime is being a prominent, intellectual, and well-respected Uyghur man. Therefore, CCP was threatened by his talent, knowledge, and his excellence in leadership. Chinese government sees prominent, well-educated, and wealthy figures like my father within the Uyghur communities threats to their regime, and by using such terms such as I uh, like I mentioned above, two-faced separatists. Uh, religion extremists, uh, abusing power, and many more multiple um, false accusations towards Uyghur and brutally confiscates their lifelong earnings and uh, leave their families with nothing. They have been locking up multiple family members at the same time for the same accusation. And at the end, um, it's scary as it sounds, and they imprison them without. Um, showing any any evidence and findings. Uh, my uncle, Hegem Qad Qadr, uh, who was a judge in uh, Kurla city, he was also arrested because he was, uh, he's related to my father. It is unbearable when I think about him behind the bars. This traumatic experience has caused immense immeasurable pain to me and my family members. Ever since he disappeared, my life has, has turned into misery, a challenge with sleepless nights, panic attacks, utter feeling of helplessness, and I feel like I've lost my happiness forever. It grieves me to think of my mother who's all alone in the house. And since both of them were retired for many years, they had a chance to resume their hobbies and enjoy each other's company. My father started painting after 40 years um, as a wedding present. And for the birth of my first child, he gifted me two most beautiful paintings and that he painted. He also planted a Japanese maple tree in front of my house as a symbol of a newborn. My brother and I have been silenced for almost three years after my dad's disappearance because we were so afraid that something would happen to my mom and sister. And also we were worried that it would negatively affect my dad's hearing. However, after the accusation, accusation were falsified and he was sentenced, we couldn't 
we could no longer bear the injustice that we faced. And we finally broke our silence. And as his children, we have the right to ask about my father's whereabouts and fight for his human rights. My brother and I have hired human rights attorney, Michael Pollack, who works for Justice, Justice Abroad in UK. Um, he has been leading on my dad's case and pursuing all uh, avenues from filing petitions to the representatives of United Nations, uh, encouraging politicians to spread awareness about his case and uh, raise concerns. Uh, he's um, helping us bring my dad like to the public attention through the international press and human rights organization. Um, I have also had multiple interviews uh, with uh, journals from different countries, such as Voice of America, Radio Free Asia, um, UHRP, Voice, uh, Voice News, Friends 24, and Eat News from Taiwan. My father has several uh, major health issues such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and uh, he was finally able to break free of cancer in past decades. And it breaks my heart that he is now in a life-threatening danger due to the brutal condition and, and spreads of coronavirus in China's prison. Therefore, I urgently seek your immediate action and attention in locating my father by any possible means, helping him to be released from his wrongful imprisonment. Here are things that you can do to help. Uh, please sign the petition. I've just created this petition um, just uh, before we attend this event. And uh, hopefully, Malaysian um, uh, rest of the people that you, who are watching right now, please start signing the petition for me. And follow me on, on Twitter and share my story tagging Chinese embassies uh, in the U.S. and in Malaysia and the rest of the world. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Nursiman, Sister, uh, Sister Subi, Sister Nursiman, and Sister Eldana for your, for your talk. And it's, it's really difficult for me. Um, personally, uh, to listen to your stories and, and doing this discussion, um, because yeah, I mean, who cannot be, you know, heartbroken? To your own family members uh, to be imprisoned and not being able to contact them at all. So, yeah. So, but we're going to get through this, um, of course, uh, for, for our audience, right? Uh, for them to really grasp. Um, but I mean, as if that's not enough, but inshallah, we'll 